In this course you come across two very different kinds of software. Tracker is a very specific tool developed by the USA's National Science Foundation Open Source Physics Program which lets us capture, analyze and export data from moving objects to captured on a video clip. GeoGebra by contrast is a very open-ended exploration tool applicable in many problems. We have used the algebra graphics and spreadsheet views as well as the input bar. There's also a programming interface using the Python language and other developments include 3D stereo graphics, a computer algebra system and support for a variety of sensors such as temperature probes. I'm just going to show you a few doodles I've been playing around with using ideas you've met on the course already, illustrating some of the range of models we can build using the GeoGebra techniques you've already met. The first illustration is a model of Juan Martín del Potro's service action. The points S shoulder, E, elbow and W wrist represent the positions as seen in the photograph and R represents the top of his racket. Each of these can move on a circular arc because the racket's a fixed length, Del Potro's arms are fixed lengths and so on. So really the model here is quite a simple one each is going to be a circular arc, but each circular arc has a centre which itself moves. So if we put that into an animation, bang, there's the service action. We've ignored the fact that Del Potro is also jumping up and throwing himself forward, and so a more sophisticated model would include those as well. But what we've also seen here is pretty well how Kepler set about originally trying to model the uh, orbit of planets using a combination of circles in motion before he abandoned that idea and went on to ellipses. So if you have a look at a different kind of uh, picture, here's the familiar satellite dish and I put it into sort of cross section where we have a parabolic, could be a mirror if this was a telescope, the point P follows a locus it's the same distance always from a fixed point F as it is from this fixed line representing, say, the end of our telescope. That's called the focus and this is called the directrix. So the yellow thing is a locus and I've illustrated the fact that parallel rays of light or electromagnetic rays would come, they would be reflected off the parabola as if it was along the tangent, so they'd be reflected in the normal and each time they pass through F. So wherever the ray is, uh, hits the mirror or the satellite dish, it gets reflected to the focus or collector. And we've got a few points in here so we could show how you could rotate it or change the dimensions. So it's quite a simple model, not very sophisticated, but it gives a pretty clear idea of the power of a parabola as a modeling tool, quadratic function if we look at algebra. Here's a slightly more sophisticated idea. Far too much information around on the screen. I'll just hide those things away. Um, but basically, we've got two circles, an outer circle, the blue one, which is the major circle, an inner circle, the red one, which is a minor circle. And the point M can slide on the outer circle, where its radius hits the inner circle as the point N. And the point P has got the same X coordinate as M and Y coordinate as N. So as P as M moves, P tracks round and you can see the locus is this green orbit. So P represents our planet and according to Kepler, the Sun is at one or other focus of this ellipse. And if we change the dimensions here, you could see the focus gets closer to the uh, center. So here is a, a reasonable model and uh, we could put that into motion by animating M. Uh, that would seem to be quite good. We've got our planet going round and round the Sun just like Kepler's laws. But the only problem is we're supposed to sweep out equal areas in equal times. So I've taken a 15 degree sector here found the corresponding point n dashed and therefore the corresponding point p dashed. So this little triangle approximates the area swept out and we can see that at different positions the area of that triangle actually changes. It should be constant 
but as we go round that sweep varies quite a bit. So this is not a very sophisticated model. We need a more um, elegant model. And if you go and have a look about the orrery, you'll find that the Victorian engineers actually made mechanical models which did the right kind of speeds. And our final one is just to get Sophie uh, going down the slope on her toboggan properly. So what we've got is a little bit of her photograph coming in. The point P moves up and down the line, but it isn't just animated in a normal way. It's got, like we did for netball, it's got a slider representing the time. We've calculated the equations of motion of P, just like Galileo would have done for what was called his trolley experiment, inclined plane. And so the, if we look put that into animation, so let's put the clock back to zero and start the animation. You'll see she goes off slowly but gathers speed as the time rolls on. Force of gravity is pulling her down the slope and she's accelerating. Well that concludes our little bit of looking at some of the uh, summative ideas into some simple GeoGebra models. We hope you have fun using some for yourself and don't forget to publish them to GeoGebra Tube if you um, would like to share it with a community which we very much hope you'll do. Thank you and good luck to you all.